I bought an oscillating spindle cylinder off Amazon. Did I do good or did I do bad? Let's find out together. This is the Win Model 6510T oscillating spindle sander. It comes with a cast iron top, onboard storage, and dust collection. This model uses only the drum style spindle. It does not come with a belt attachment. This model is rated at 2,000 rotations per minute, 58 oscillations per minute, with a 5 8 inch stroke which means you will burn through the top and bottom of your sleeves long before you do the center. I've never even used an oscillating spindle sander before, so I wasn't sure exactly what to expect. And I was a little surprised that this does come with a cast iron top at this price point. This sander is light, so at only 30.2 pounds, don't expect that cast iron to be very thick. It is actually very, very thin. The directions say to use kerosene to clean the coating off the top, but I didn't have any, and it's very expensive and kind of hard to get here. So I just cleaned it off with some bow shield and then sprayed it down with a T9 rust protection. So this sander has plenty of onboard storage. On the front, there's a slot here for each of the different sizes of throat plates. There's a standard on and off switch. And I use the slot for whatever throat plate that I'm using to hold this large washer which is kind of annoying, but I'll get into that in a minute. And around back, we have a spot for the wrench to change out the sanding sleeves. There is a spot for each of the six different sizes of sanding sleeves, and there is a dust collection port. Luckily, I had an adapter to hook my shop back up to this inch and a half dust collector port. To change out the drums, you just take the nut off, and there's a lock washer and an another washer. Take those off, slide that out, take your throat plate out which is an issue because you can't get the throat plates out without a knife there should have been a finger hole in here then you just drop a new throat plate on put your new drum on and then put a washer which goes back to what i was saying earlier there's actually three different sizes of washers and no place on here to put them so i'm going to lose them then you put your nut back on tighten it up Put the wrench back in the holder and you're good to go. So I took a piece of scrap and I made a few cuts. I made a large one that I cut as close to the line as I could, a medium one a little bit further away, a small one that I jacked up as much as I could, and a grab handle. So the large one where I cut close to the line worked out great. Super fast, super simple, everything worked out good, it looked perfect. So I was very disappointed in the dust collection until I realized that I didn't turn it on. So with the dust collection turned on and a smaller drum, I moved on to the next size and it worked great. Dust collection worked great, but this is not designed to remove a lot of material. You need to cut closer to your lines. Small cut was the same. I just need to do a better job with my cut. So the handle worked well also, although I did have a little trouble getting a straight line with that round drum. And just to see a final product, I took this over to my Ryobi router table and put a round over on it and it turned out great. My Ryobi router table is also another very good inexpensive tool. I'll drop a link in the description to my review so you can check it out. There's a lot to like about this. I like the cast iron top. I like the onboard storage. I like the way that it works and I like the price. Although there are a couple things that I wish were different. I wish the throat plates had finger holes. I wish there was some place to store these washers on board. And I wish the dust collector port was a standard size. But I feel that this is a great machine at a great price and it's going to be a great addition to my shop. Thanks for watching.